Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order for Northampton License Commission on August 7, 2019. Uh, commissioners are present Brian Campadelli, Natasha Yakolov, and Helen Kahn. I want to announce that we are audio and video recording. Um, at this time, is there any public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to item three discussion with City Solicitor Seawald on setting a procedure for administering fair wage bonds. How are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Great. So um, last year when um, uh, when you were working on wage bonds, they were being set and the licensees were not being informed that they were being set. So I think that the commission really has two choices here. You can fix a way of just imposing a wage bond by picking a multiple of the, the judgment or some other rational way. But if you're going to do this, if you're going to use your discretion to set a bond, then you really need to give notice to the licensee and hold a hearing. That's really the message I have for you. And you know, it's really uh, up to, to you to decide how you prefer to do this. Um, if you're going to uh, exercise discretion, we'll need to come up with some standards by which you, you know, exercise that discretion. You know, what factors are you going to apply so that you're applying all the same factors in every situation and only accounting for the changes in the factual, you know, under underpinnings of the of the violation and the judgment that was entered. Uh, so it's really up to you to decide how you would like to proceed on that. So when we when this started and we had a similar conversation, the factor we used was three times the fee imposed. The judgment. Yeah. The judgment fee, which in some cases became, or in a case, became quite large and punitive beyond what seemed reasonable. So it would be helpful to have a discussion of how to how to set it up so that it's not just one factor because it's unfair, right. but it also cannot be arbitrary. But regardless, whatever decision the commission makes, there has to be a hearing with the licensee, is what you're saying. Right, unless yeah. you're going to just put in your regulations that you know, if there's a judgment, you're going to require three times the, for instance, three times the judgment as a wage bond. If you do that uniformly, you can do that uniformly. But if you're not going to do it uniformly right. and you yes. want to exercise discretion and you want to make, be able to make adjustments, then you're going to have to hold a hearing and <coughs> set standards by which you make Make, you know, exercise mm -hmm. that discretion. Can you say that across the board it could be, say, for instance, one and a half percent, um, unless the actual judgment um, or fine exceeded that amount, that it would match that amount? If, if you're, as long as you're creating standards that just, yeah, so just it's apply, one standard, so it, we don't have to keep having meetings. Over it. Exactly. You know. So the other question I had too, in regards to the one that was large last year, I, I vaguely remember we were talking about. Um, you know, either the commission or somehow the city also has a second means of repercussion on that. I mean, we have, it doesn't necessarily always just have to be that 3% and, and, you know, it could just be like that one and a half across the board, but I mean, <clears throat> couldn't we also take action or other action? Don't we have another, re isn't there any other resource? There? You have no role in wage you know, yeah, it's really enforcing wage laws other than imposing a wage bond. This for was, I think, this was the mechanism that yeah. we put to place when the concerns were brought forward. And so far, you guys are the only ones who've had an opportunity to impose a wage bond in the city. You know, you know there are wage bond requirements for city contracts, you know, in other areas, but uh, we haven't, we haven't had a, a contract with the judgment. We won't have license holders with judgments for <coughs> wage, the wage law violations. So that's the message. I'm, I'm happy to work with you. I'm not sure that you know this is something you can do today. It's not really on your agenda. We're just discussing mm -hmm. you know procedures. And, uh, so I think that you know perhaps at another meeting I'd be happy to work with, with Annie on you know what you come up with ideas of what you want to look at, I can put it into language that would be appropriate for your regulations. Uh, but I think that the, the commission needs to think before the next, you know, uh, liquor licensing uh, session, you know, comes around again in November, 
that you have this all in place and ready to go. Right. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're familiar. We also uh, received an email from Valerie. Yes, Gear. I saw that. But any sense to me? So uh, I understood that it was within three years. So if the judgment is within three years of I mean, the license is issued within three years of the judgment according to regulations. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, it's very good. So I guess they're asking if, um, you know, they're trying to get a rate. They're probably asking if we can bring that down instead of that. I mean, if they've already, I guess that's another question I have. If they've already, we have the three times, you know, a 3% or whatever it is above, but they've already paid their due on that. If we wanted to impose something new, like this, I think is what we discussed last time, so lower across the board, or get it a little more fair or something, uh, it just seems excessive. But um, does this need to, do they have to, they're required to buy this every single year? For three years. years. Because they had a violation. A judgment, not a violation, but a not an allegation of a violation. This was a judgment right. against the state. And, and, you know, while I understand that the numbers get large, the violation was pretty violation large. Was large. True. I mean, it was a fairly egregious violation because yeah. when we've seen other violations, it's you know twelve hundred dollars. Right. When you're in the sixty thousand dollar range, you know that you have been undertaking some pretty egregious violations of wage laws, and um, so I, I'm not sure that it's rational to say that the the bigger the violation, the less the penalties. Could be. I agree. No, yeah. I, I agree yeah. with that. Uh, so. Or well, because there's been such a, a wide gap between the violations we've, or the judgments that we've dealt with, we didn't right. have to have a process that is clear. That's right. It's not about necessarily the size and the fairness and the that type of things. Mm -hmm. Clarity. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll figure it out. So I guess well, the question on this then is that um, you know at this point it stands at three times. Um, if we were at the September meeting to to change it, to change the way that we um, assess these fees, would that then apply to Would some? apply to anyone who's getting a bond this year for this cycle of, of okay. relicensing? Yeah. Okay. So then that would apply to us on the license. If we were to change it. Yeah. Then, if you were to change the rates, it would apply to all the licenses. Okay. Okay. So can the amount be changed once it's been set? Because last year it was one, one. Every year you're setting a new bond. Okay. So you're fixing bonds for any violators within the last 30 years, so you have the right to decide that you're going to do it differently this year. But I think we need to have something in the regulations that really fixes what you're doing. So I think there were two other judgments. Right. So will we be revisiting those then as the bond is reissued for this yes. year? Yes. <coughs> All the there should be three of them that you're getting wage bonds for. Uh, one of them went out of business. Oh, they okay. Right. So, yeah. it's so it's it'll be just two. Two. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. I will say that we're swimming in some uncharted waters here, so yeah, we're kind of making it up as we go along, only because this is so new. Right. It might, it, would it be helpful to consult other communities who have this wage bond? I mean, I know I think, it's, I think industry, it's sort of industry specific. It is industry specific. The two industries that are most targeted are uh, restaurant or you know, food service industries and construction industries. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, I know Springfield just adopted something like this. Um, so if you take a look, I don't think they've applied it yet. Okay. Is there anyone else in the state? Or? I don't know. I can find out. I, I seem to remember New Jersey was like the closest we found. Maybe before. Yeah, this has been prompted by the, by the uh, Carpenter community, so they would probably have that information. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Take care. <coughs> Item number four, application for fine water, uh, farm winery liquor license to sell at farmer's market agricultural events. Guards Red Hen Farm LLC DBA Mineral Hills Winery, August 30th, uh, 2019, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. August 31st, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. September 1st, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. September 2nd, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The location is Three County Fairgrounds, 54 Fair Street, 
the events of Three County Fair, and the type is a winery liquor license to sell. So, can you state your name for the record? I'm Larry Goddard from Bitter Hills Winery. Hey, Larry, thanks for coming. Um, you've done this in the past, correct? About seven years in a row now. Right. So, nothing's really changed. Nothing. You really serve, so. I will make a motion to approve the application for farm winery liquor license to sell at Farmers Markets and Agricultural Events as outlined in item number four on the meeting agenda. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Will you be mailing that picture? Uh, yeah, I'll be mailing you in the morning. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Item number five, application for five, uh, another farm winery liquor license to sell at the Farmer's Market Agricultural Events, uh, Hardwood Vineyards and Winery, LLC. The date and times are August 30th, 4 to 10 p.m., 31st, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., September 1st, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., September 2nd, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Three County Fairgrounds, 54 Fair Street, Three County Fair, can you state your name for the record? Gigi Campbell. Hi, thank you for Hi. coming. So, have you done this before? Um, your winner? I don't know that I work for them, but yeah, I've been doing it for five years. I yeah. actually submit the applications and okay. get the license. Okay. Great. So, um, the same. No questions. I have no questions. Um, so, I will make a motion to approve the application for farm winery liquor license to sell at farmers markets and agricultural events as detailed in item 5 of the agenda. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for coming. Number 6, application for short term liquor license. Blue Paws Inc., DBA, JJ's Tavern. And that's uh, Saturday, October 5th, 2019, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Location 99 Main Street, Florence, rear parking lot. The event, um, uh, uh, you can say October, it. <laughs> October 5th, 2019, when uh, you got your tips and insurance. So, uh, state your name for the record. John Newman. Hi, John. Thanks for coming. Um, so, seating and Alcohol uh, confinement, things like that. Yep, back, back is all roped off with uh, cones and get the guard rail and fence on the left and right side, and then the front side is also roped off for the car entrance. So. Same as up here? Yep, okay. fifth, fifth year. Perfect. Yeah, no, 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 no. If nothing's yeah. changed since you were here last year, I don't have questions. Um, did you want to ask about that? Oh, for the email? Or yeah, so your outdoor your seating area in the back that you were talking about? So yeah. You sent an email um, with some photos? Yeah. And what are you trying to do? Just create some tables back there? Yeah, so we had the cooler out there. It was on, the, on that platform that's attached to our staircase that went inside. And there's bollards on it from protect the cooler. So I was just kind of trying to fence that in, kind of confine it in there. And then just be, yeah, just put seasonal metal tables and chairs out there. Right. Umbrella. More than that, so like it's it's not there's no you don't go onto the the public or the you know our parking lot or anything like that's all flows right through our staircase down. When you say fence, what are you talking about? Like you know, like a black uh, pool fence, black steel. So you legit not just take a chain and kind of. No, no, I would just be up there. Yeah. yeah okay. But I wasn't gonna. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I wasn't gonna put anything in until you sure. get it all figured out. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a sight line from the bar to this? So we have. Area? There's a window there, but we also have a camera that's going to be right on there, which is a big TV right behind where the bar is, where you're standing on the bar. You can plainly see the, the outside. Is that sufficient? Or, um, yeah, it's, yeah. it's within, uh, according to the emails, or their licensing. Right? That is, but yes, yeah, as long as there's a the means for them to view it okay. at, all, at all times, I guess. Yes, yeah, there never be a time when people are out there when we're not inside. So where is your um, where's your viewing screen? So if you're standing behind the bar, you know you're sitting at the bar. Inside, right, right inside, right yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So the beam, right, so just the yeah. bartender can see it. Yeah. Okay. Great. I mean, so we can go ahead and, and uh, vote on you know, the short term. 
Yeah. So we'll just say follow up with a no mail showing your fencing and yeah, that's, such. that's fine. But as far as we're concerned, it's already within your license. So okay. You're just going to have to do the uh, you know, parameters of uh, delineation for the right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, all right. So, uh, so if there's no other questions, you want to make a motion on it? Sure. I will make a motion to approve the application for the short term liquor license for Blue Paws Inc. DBA JJ's Tavern on Saturday, October 5th from 2 to 7 p.m. at 99 Main Street, Lawrence, in the parking lot for the Ock Flower Fest. I'll second all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I ask this question every year, but I forget. So, if if it's rain and it's a bad day, I can't use it for Sunday, correct? Or how does that work? It's never happened on the wood, but we always want You probably have to pull that permit for both days. Yeah, no, you can use that transferable. Right, right so I could, I could, okay. So, so I mean, it's a, it's a game. Either I apply for one or six or I sell them. Right, yeah, it's an extra day. It's another day yeah. you have to pay for it? Yeah. yeah. So I guess you have that. Yes, wait a minute. All right, let's check. Does it ever rain? It hasn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. I'll see you. Thank you. Okay, number seven, public hearing on application for transfer of liquor license, pledge of liquor license, and transfer of common liquor license. Highbrow Inc., DBA, Highbrow, uh, Wood Fire Kitchen and Bar, 12 Crafts Ave, Spoleto Inc., it's from Spoleto Inc., DBA, per Pizzeria, Paradiso, as well as managers, Andrew Brown. Um, at this time, um, to uh, make a motion to open a public hearing. So we can hear any public comment. Can you state your name for the record? Andrew Bell. Hi. Hey, how are you guys? So you're uh, purchasing this um, restaurant? Yes, sir. Okay. Great. You're doing it solely yourself? Or yep. is there any well, other? Bank, I'll bank loan, but yeah, I'm sold myself. No other investors? Not yet. No. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so what's your operation going to be? Is it the same as what's there now? Are you going to change it? Uh, I'm not changing. I'm, ch I'm doing like some painting and carpets and tables and chairs menu, but uh, I'm not changing any walls or any fixtures or anything like that. Right. And outside seating is in between that? Yep, alleyway? in between the alleyways, yep. Okay. Right. Will you be creating more seating in the interior changes that you're making? No, no. Yeah. Well, I'm saying I can't really fit any more time than that. So yeah. I'm actually losing a couple seats for a little bit of a waiting area. So. Not ideal, but necessary. Um, and although I read the article about you, can you just <laughs> give us um, some information about your background? With these um, so I moved to Northampton from Springfield my last couple of years of elementary school, uh, raised in Northampton public schools, uh, went to Smith Vocational High School. I actually was part of the uh, public uh, television. I actually filmed the city councilors when I was like 13 in the year. Uh, so I went to Smith Vogue for culinary arts, worked for Claudio at six, from 16 to 24, moved down to North Carolina, and then I moved back up and worked for Bill Collins at Center Square Grill in East Meadow, and then I've recently been back since January, so Northampton kid coming back full circle. And this is all hard, but I was like the first restaurant I ate at when I was in town, so it's just really exciting. Uh, is there any other public comment regarding this? All right, so I'm going to close the public hearing on this. Um, now we can't have this. Well, you're supposed to yeah. So Make a motion to close the public hearing. Yeah, because I can't hold the favor. I'll look crazy in this. Um, great, so when do you take uh, ownership? September 1st. Beautiful. Is that when the sign goes up? That's when the sign was actually my sign guy. The sign was up on the third. I already have the building permit pulled for that. So that's going up. Awnings are coming down. We're doing some painting. Put some new chairs and new artwork. And this so is it closed now? No, I'm actually, I, I actually am the director of operations for the Splitter Restaurant Group currently. Uh, so that's kind of home base for me. So I'm actually training my staff. So it's kind of a seamless changeover. So I don't have to be closed for a month and spend a bunch of money that I don't really have to train staff. Uh, but I'm shooting for September 7th for my soft opening and September 9th for the grand opening. Perfect. Uh, all right. So we're going to Open for lunch, too. I don't know if that has any different, if that makes a difference. Was it ever before? No. Oh, great. Okay. Oh. 
Sweet. They just wanted to have that component for the adults and be able to sit outside and watch Woodstock on the anniversary. Excellent. And you were there for the grand opening, right? Yeah, the open house or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it went okay. It was a little yeah. under patronized. I yeah. mean, we did okay. I sold probably as many little Maple Mama sodas or right. whatever as right. I did beer. It wasn't a, a ton of people there, but. It was good. I like to, you know, it's more like to support the organization than anything and to kind of just keep. I, I, what I told them was they were a little bit, you know, sorry, it wasn't so, you know, great. But I said, well, you know what? It's just every small steps and we'll get people to know the place better and that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to help them as much as I can. Um, I'm working that night at Sierra Grill, so I can't be over there to do it myself, which is what I did last time. So mm -hmm. hopefully we kind of just break even and make it be an appealing event. Hopefully they can do more of them in the future. Approve the application for short term liquor license for building eight brewing on Wednesday, August 14th from 7 30 to 10 30 at the Northampton Center for the Arts, 30 Holly Street, for the outdoor screening of Woodstock. Second that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you at Andy before the weekend. Number right. uh, nine, application for short term liquor licenses, Northampton Community Television. Location, Northampton Center for the Arts, 33 Holly Street, Mall. And date and time, August 30th, 2019, 6 p.m. 7 p.m. The Art and Film Reception for the event. And also Friday, October 18th, 2019, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. The event is Northampton Open, Media Relaunch and Annual Meeting. Can you state your name for the record? Uh, Peter Albert Williams. Hi, right, Peter. Thank you for coming. So, um, in the same area? I no, assume, in the same area. Side? Yeah. Yeah, we, we have our satellite location in 33 Holly Street. Oh, okay. Uh, we're one of the tenants there, so I, we have the space in the high school we've been in for a number of years, and we opened a uh, second satellite space in the uh, downstairs there. So, these two events are part of our programming event space. Great. Um, the first one's uh, art and film. It's like projection art and also clothing and custom made furniture and a film screen. And the second one is we are relaunching uh, as Northampton Open Media. Virginia. Oh, okay. Northampton Open Media. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, because we don't just do television, television right. is sort of an antiquated sure. idea. And so it's sort of embracing <laughs> our, <laughs> our identity more fully. There you go. Yeah. Bring up the youngsters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. 
Certainly, I will uh, make a motion to approve the application for short-term liquor licenses um, as detailed in item nine of the agenda. Uh, second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yes. Number 10, application for change of manager and change of hours request for extension of hours. MP Majestic Enterprises, LLC, DBA, the Majestic Saloon. Mike Prosiak, is it? That was, we're transferring from Mike to Philip. Not Philip. Pardon me? I'm Philip. Okay, Philip. Um, requesting to serve food until 3 a.m. with wine and malt sales to cease at 1.30 a.m. And he's already stated your name for the record, but thanks for being here. So what uh, can you tell us about, you know, why you want to make the move, you know, change? Which, the manager? Well, no, the, uh, I'm, I'm on the time. Um, the time change? Yeah. So we've been doing a, a number of events uh, at the bar. We do currently close at 1 a.m. Um, and uh, we're going to be moving most of those type of events in the weekends and we, we think it would be uh, beneficial to us to be able to go to 2 a.m. So that's why we're requesting the, the, the time, the closing time, to move from 1 to 2 a.m. Yeah, 2 or so, 3? Well, yeah. so, so what we're asking for is we're asking that, the, that we be able to, to move our liquor sale to the closing time to 2 a.m. The food service aspect of it is that we're asking to be able to serve food to 3 a.m. So 3 a.m. To 3 a.m. All right. The reason it's confusing because you just said you're closing time at 2 a.m. That's what I mean for the liquor. The liquor needs to stop at 1.30. That's yes. what we're doing. And that's okay. what we're doing. We're stopping liquor at And your current license only allows you till 1? 1 a.m. So the, it's a little confusing to do the form because the form for requesting the extension because from 1 to 2 a.m. So, so that's what we're requesting for. Okay. So, so that we normally be able to serve liquor until 2 a.m. But then the extension of hours is to also then allow us to serve food at 3 a.m. So and would closing the establishment at 2 a.m. not be um, sufficient for what it is you're trying to accomplish? Not with respect to the food. So we're really looking at the late night food on again on the weekends. So we're so that we're we're actually looking at that that crowd that's coming in at very late night. And then Friday and Saturday night? Yeah. Friday and Saturday night. Friday and Saturday. So we're essentially making a press very similar to what local burgers are currently doing. Yeah. Okay. So I fully understand stuff and I'm looking for letter. You're talking about um, Monday through Thursday, you're saying closing at 2 a.m.? Yes. And then Friday, and, or Sunday through, are you open Sunday? Sunday. Yeah, so Sunday, sorry, Sunday through Thursday is closing at 2 a.m., fully closing at 2 a.m. Yes. And then Friday and Saturday, stopping alcohol service, but staying at 2 a.m. Or at 1.30. And you, that, that extra hour is important for you to capture that, yes. that crowd you noticed? Are you, are you throwing a lot of people at it? <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a lot of people. Well, well, we notice that there are a lot of people that want food yeah. at that time. And uh, um, so when we're closing, there are a lot of people clustered out there that want food. And they're tired. So what kind of food do you serve? <laughs> so we're, in, we're working on a, a partnership uh, with uh, uh, a chef who's doing uh, sort of a, it's authentic Mexican taco. Uh, burritos. So for this particular portion mm -hmm. of the, the late night thing, we would be serving out pre-made uh, burritos ready to go. So we're, we're hoping that a very fast food processing kind of experience for people. And then it'll be made inside the, the building? It yes. won't be a food truck or anything? No, in front. it'll be made okay. on the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be, uh, so what we're hoping is that there won't be lines and people waiting. There'll be people be able to come in and get Um, on these days uh, that you're open until 3, um, it says um, that you can cease consumption of beer and wine um, at 
at 2 a.m. and how, how would you make sure that that happens so people are no longer drinking wine and beer at 2 a.m.? I think what we what we had hoped was we would stop serving at 1.30. Right. Oh, my God. And then are you taking away classes at 2? We would have to at 2, yeah. It would be the same as a regular closing. Right. I mean, because then you're kicking people out the door at 2 a.m. versus it's still open, but they're there. Um, so they didn't have to actually physically yeah. remove. Yeah. Yeah, but it was nursing their beer. Yeah. <laughs> So would your would your serving times during the week change, uh, you know, for your own rules? Would they be different than the weekends? Like, would you stop serving earlier during the week, or would during you? the week we would stop? And, yeah, we, we well we would we're asking for the extension to two a.m. Correct, but we would stop at two a.m. So you're you know seven days a week. You, or you would serve until somebody wanted to. Until switch gears here a little okay. bit and I'm going to go back to Michael. Where, where is he? How is he involved in this? Michael is leaving. Um, Are you buying him out? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Leaving? He's leaving the, the business. Okay. So, so I'm taking over the full uh, ownership of this. So what has to happen? So, so um, that's in process. Okay. Yep, there will need to be an application for a transfer yeah, of change of ownership. I'm aware of that. Okay. Now. That's all in process right now. <clears throat> we should, I should have more information as soon as it's Friday. Okay. Um, so, in, Go ahead. Uh, yeah, in terms of what we're looking at today, um, is that something that with, I mean, without that transfer of ownership, is there a piece of this, the change of manager? Can that be approved by us at this time, or, or are we you can see yeah. that? You can that. I'm still, I guess yeah. We could, we could approve the change of manager without because problem. Without um, I want to know how many other bars or establishments in Northampton are open until the same time that he's requesting right now? Just one? And it's a local burger? For the week, for that Friday, Saturday, but Packers is open until two. And, right, for the week. Oh yeah, there's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of establishments that have two a.m. closing time. Yeah. But Local Burger is the only one that has a three a.m. Food, food service. I got you. One of my concerns is the there's residences upstairs, so with a, a second business possibly having this three a.m. you know encouraging people to come between the hour of two and three to sell food. How do you plan on mitigating? We think it will actually alleviate some of the issues because we intend to be moving people through much more rapidly. And so, in the current situation, people are waiting in lines okay. for food to be prepared. We think it will actually alleviate some of the I see. some of the traffic. Yep. I mean, not on the traffic, but just the lingering. Right. Right. So. Okay. All right. Do you want to make a um, I actually have questions regarding the manager piece. Oh, okay. So, how long have you worked at the Majestic? Uh, we started the project in uh, December. We opened in April. So you've been there for the duration. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, great. Every day. All okay. Day, and, the okay. <laughs> and have you ever been um, the manager of a liquor establishment before this? change of hours, request for extension of uh, change of manager. I make a motion to approve the application for the change of manager for MP Majestic Enterprises, LLC, DBA and Majestic Saloon from Michael Prosiak to Philip Peak. I'll second that on the favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, so now let's talk about Back to the, um, so local burgers are the only one serve until three. Mm -hmm. A lot of other bars are until two. 
where they have food service till two as well. Yeah. Yeah. So they can. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I believe. You correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that Sam's was also serving late night. Yeah. Like until two, not three. Yeah. Yeah. No, local burger is the only one. Yeah. And what's your proximity to the local beer? We are two doors now. Yeah. Two doors. So you just want some of that business. Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We you know we're renting the space. So, so to me, fun. that's actually even better because the apartment's above, it's already, people are already there. Two doors down, what's the big deal? I mean, to me, I don't know. There's an empty space. What kind of, and there's an empty space in the yeah. yeah, what kind of complaints have been? You know, as far as Chief Casper's, uh, you know, involvement, they do get calls. What are you going to do about uh, your security staff? Because as we know, when everybody leaves everybody else's bar and comes to the ones that are serving food and open, it's going to get crowded. Yeah, There's going to be well, we've had, with the with the extension from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m., we're going to increase the security. So like what's your security now? Someone on the door. Well, we have it. We have we have it. We have it. Essentially, right now we're running the bar with a with a bartender, a bar back, and two people in the kitchen, uh, and that's been fine. Right. We haven't had any issues. And your closing time right now is. 1 a. Yeah. So. So. We need, yeah, because everybody's to, leaving your place and going next to bring an additional person on. Uh, and that would be a doorman, your security yeah. specialist, so and that's yeah. all they would do. Yes. Okay. And when you have events and such, you. I, you want to move some of your like weekend events to weekends to try and generate more business. Do you have somebody? It's not necessarily to generate more business. It's actually we want to do that in part because the the events that we've been doing midweek yep. are very popular. Yep. Uh, and we we think that they actually are not well suited for the neighborhood. Right. I've seen it on Wednesday night. Yeah. Yeah, we <laughs> I drove by. I was like, what the heck? So like, there's a lot of people there. Part of what there. we want to do is move to the weekend yeah. to make it. And on those nights, do you have somebody at the door for IDs, or is yes. that just happening at the bar? Okay. Yeah. We, have, we have someone on the door, both for ID and for, uh, and for regulating the, the number of people in the bar. Right. Okay. So, uh, I mean, that's my opinion that they're, you know, two doors away, and if mm -hmm. you've licensed one to do it, yep. you should be able to license the other. Yeah. But and I appreciate your... Part of your approach being to sort of help that crowd, or or give the crowd outside something to do and something yeah. else to eat to try and mitigate that yeah. gathering. Place to buy food. Yeah. Genius, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I have no further questions. So I think. I'm not. Okay. If you'd like to make a motion. You want this happen? I want it. Um, I will make a motion to yeah. approve. Uh, Maybe a question about oh, the yes. entertainment on the weekends, oh. how late that's going to go. Oh, that's the reason not have a cool license. Right? Yeah, doesn't have an entertainment license, but how late is it going to go until 3 a.m.? Well, it wouldn't, isn't it a separate license? I think our current yeah. one. Yeah. But, so it doesn't coincide with. If but it will if they're open until 3, that will affect your entertainment license. Uh, There's no end time on the entertainment license, or does it just say closing? Um, I think there is. Yeah. Um, yeah, so do you know what the end time is on the, that license? Midnight. Midnight, okay. And is that how you So is your, is your intention to actually go till 3 a.m. with entertainment? Okay, so you're going to keep your entertainment license the same. All right. We, we, we decided to change the entertainment license. You'll come back. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, that was a great No, no, that's no, a great question. Sorry. That's good. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, so I will make a motion to approve the change of hours, request for extension of hours, um, as, as detailed, not in that, well, period, I guess, um, <laughs> as detailed in a letter. <laughs> um, not dated. OK, I'm, looking, I'm trying to look for information. So anyway, yes, I will approve. Um, the, the request for the change of hours and extension of hours. So I'll second that all in favor. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good. We'll see you for the change of ownership. Yes. Yes. Next month. I Great. Hopefully I have that all together. Great. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Yep. Um, item 11 is approval of minutes of 2019. That would be Natasha and Helen. 
read the minutes. So, uh, excellent. I would make a motion to approve the June 5th, 2019 minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And July 3rd, Brian and Natasha vote on these. So. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the July 3rd, 2019 minutes. Okay, I'll second. Aye. Aye. Let's see. And July 16th, uh, again, Brian and Natasha. I'll make a motion to approve the July 16th, 2019 minutes. And second, all in favor. Aye. Looks good. Clerk's update. Yes, I sent you guys the email. Um, maybe just for the record, I can read what they um, they said that um, the vehicles found non-compliant at the time of the audit were waiting to be serviced, reconditioned, and determined if the vehicle would be retailed or wholesaled during that process. The vehicle is also prepared for the consumer to test drive or purchase. Once the vehicle is prepared for a retail sale, the service department would fix a lemon law sticker to the vehicle. Since the audit, we have changed our policy and procedure. Now we apply all lemon law stickers at the time the vehicle is dropped off on our lot. We also implemented a strict policy to check all vehicles for compliance every morning and every evening before they leave the dealership. Yep. I read that as well. Okay. Um, okay. Helen, your parking pad. Yes, I'm wondering, am I going to be ticketed today? Do you Probably. think I looked at it now? <sighs> And then do I get it unticketed? Because I said yes. Yes, if you, yes, I will show them the agenda and let me know if you want. Okay, yeah, when I pulled it out, I went, Do you guys like the new font on the agenda? It's totally awesome. I love it. I didn't know if you felt one way or the other. Okay, perfect. It's That's fine. Clear. All I need to know. <laughs> do you like the new font? I do. I think it looks better. <laughs> That's That's really what matters. Now I'm going to pull up the old bit. Um, and then just the other new business, maybe um, the Fitzwillies. He responded and provided photos of the um, of the tables and chairs. I don't know if you guys want to discuss it. Or I mean, it looks fine to me. It's yeah. kind of matches everybody else's now. It kind of looks more inviting, actually. It does. It that makes it look like it's, there's a the purpose of that table. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Great. I haven't heard back from anyone else, but they have some more time. Yep. They had 30 days, so. Great. Excellent. Anything else? I don't know. Let's see. Um, yeah, the new business is done, so I'm going to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.